Before we get into this film, I must stress that we as professional bike riders go a lot faster than anyone should on public roads. When I'm riding on holiday or training, never do I ride this fast. It would be reckless, dangerous and irresponsible. Races are held on closed roads by riders with years of experience. There is nothing like the feeling of speed when you're descending on a bike. Those perfect hairpins, fast flowing mountain descents. Oh, I just love it. But what's the fastest you've ever been on a bike? And what's stopping you going any faster? You're about to find out. I'm now about to go and do the first descent of the day. Wish me luck. Hopefully the camera's not stolen when I get back. <laughs> So here we are at the top of my favourite climb in possibly the whole world. I'm in the Cumbra Mountains in South East Ireland and if you go down this descent, I tell you, you can go pretty fast. But when I was out training, I always took it very steady. I was very cautious, I obeyed the rules of the road. I watched out for any of those spare Erin sheep around. None, none I can show you here, but there's a lot of sheep around and you've got to watch out for them. But when I was racing, it was a totally different story. The speeds in the peloton were very, very high and when I first began it was a bit of a baptism of fire, especially in my first World Tour races. I remember stage 5 of the 2017 Tour de Suisse standing out, probably the most if I'm honest, but one descent really springs to mind, the Simplon Pass, and it had been such a tough climb to get to the top. I've been suffering the whole way up and I remember thinking, thank goodness I'm at the top, I can relax now take the descent easy, have some food, have some water, and I'll be recovered by the end. Well, I tell you, that didn't happen. <laughs> because as soon as we got to the top of the climb, we absolutely flew down this descent. I think I posted a speed of about 100 kilometers an hour average on my head unit, but I think that was a bit of a lie because there were so many tunnels, the head unit kept cutting out and reducing the average of the speed. So I think it was much higher than that and other riders in the race posted on their Twitter, social media, that they'd done speeds of around 120 kilometers an hour. Uh, 72.7 mile an hour down um, one of the passes in Tour of Switzerland. 128 in the Tour of Switzerland. Uh, 114 was in the Tour of Suisse in the downhill from the Cento Valley. 111 in Tour of Switzerland. Marcus Burkhardt in particular, he posted a speed of 128 kilometers an hour. 128 kilometers an hour. Absolutely frightening. Jill Bear passed me, sitting on the top tube, having a brilliant time laughing his head off. <laughs> I was thinking, I just want to get down off this thing and escape. But I did adapt a bit, and with more practice in bigger races, I started to feel more confident. But it was just this first race, this first experience of those real fast, ripping world tour descents that scared the life out of me. So, I've decided to do some digging and find the top speeds in the peloton of all time. It seems that around 130 kilometers an hour is about the fastest anyone is going downhill on road bikes at this point in time. With Marcus Burkhardt, our example again, clocking 130.7 kilometers an hour on stage nine of the 2016 Tour de France. This time it was on the descent of the Côte de Camella. When we take wind resistance away from the equation, however, speeds go up dramatically. The fastest recorded speed on a bike is 296 kilometers an hour by Denise muller koronek who managed his motor pace behind a dragster cart on the salt flats of Utah. 296 kilometers an hour. That's the speed of a Boeing jet when it takes off. It just goes to show you how much of an effect wind resistance has on top speed. Why does 130 km an hour crop up a lot as the max speed in races? Well, thanks to a bit of physics we can try to explain. 130 km an hour can be seen as the terminal velocity of a rider, similar to how skydivers will reach a maximal speed for example. At terminal velocity, the force of gravity pulling a rider down the mountain becomes balanced with a restraining force of air resistance and other restraining forces, such as tyre rolling resistance. To reach a higher terminal velocity is hard. To push that max speed up, you're going to have to reduce your frontal area. Providing more forward force through the pedals is almost impossible, as in most races, when travelling at speeds of 130 km an hour, riders simply don't have a big enough gear fitted. However, it's 
pretty hard to reduce your frontal area further than already exhibited by pro riders on a standard UCI legal road bike. So it seems that 130 km an hour is kind of like the golden number for the time being. It'll be interesting to see if that speed goes up as we see advancements in aerodynamic technology of bikes and clothing. Or indeed, whether we really want to see that speed go any higher, and indeed, if it should get any higher. So, I rang my cousin Owen, who's got a PhD in physics, to try to get some real science clarification of the actual physics of terminal velocity. He said that to work out a rider's terminal velocity, we need to work out a few things. So firstly, we need to work out the drag force exerted on a rider when they're descending. We also need to work out the force of gravity pulling that rider downhill. And we also need to work out the forward force propelling that rider forward, descending the mountain. So firstly, to calculate the drag force, you need to work out what the air density is, multiply that by the velocity of a rider squared, multiply that by the total frontal area of the rider, multiply that again by the coefficient of drag, multiplied by a half. And to work out the force of gravity pulling that rider down the hill, this simple table or graph will show you. And lastly, to find a rider's forward force, you need to find their pedaling power and divide that by the speed of their bike. So to break that all down and put it into simple terms, the terminal velocity of a rider will be reached when the drag force exerted on a rider whilst they're descending is equal to the forward force pulling that rider down the hill plus the rider's forward force propelling that rider forward. And some simple takeaways from this. A higher frontal area will therefore reduce your terminal velocity. A heavier rider will have a higher terminal velocity. A steeper descent will also cause a higher terminal velocity. Lower air density when you're descending will increase your terminal velocity as well. And pedaling harder will also increase your terminal velocity. Finally, we've all seen by now Froome on his top tube whilst descending. It's still a controversial topic within cycling as it's a much more dangerous way of descending. With the weight of the rider on the front, you have to be so careful and we really wouldn't recommend trying this at home. The thing is, it allows the rider to get that much more aerodynamic and reduce their frontal area. So it does make a difference to your max speed or your terminal velocity. We also saw Froome pedaling whilst in the position, which creates a bit more forward force, reaching even higher max speeds. But it wasn't actually Froome who came up with the position, like many often suggest. Matty Mohorovic of Bahrain Merida actually debuted the technique when he won the 2013 Under-23 World Road Championships. The world was shocked at this new and unorthodox style. But the rest, as they say, is history. So that was how fast can you go on a bike downhill. And just remember everyone, stay safe out there when you're riding, especially on those descents. You never know when a stray cow can just walk out from a field and get in your way. So be prepared for anything. Anyway, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, let us know in the comment section below. What's your favourite descent? What's the fastest you've been on a bike? I'd love to hear from you, but I hope it's not the Simplon Pass. <laughs> we haven't worked with you if it is. <laughs> Thank you. You better stay safe and all. Mind those descending skills. <laughs>